Well, there is the question of how much have you spent? She thinks I spent twice as much as I budgeted. And... We're all looking forward to finishing this. <laughs> you just gotta go light on the steering, dude. Just, hey, go light, go light. Hey, I'm Shane. My family and I are building an autonomous shuttle in 100 days. And today we're on day 13. Our biggest goal right now is to speed up the steering function, which is currently much too slow. Austin and Brandon are back to school, so it'll be a bit of a challenge keeping pace. I'm updating the wiring for our control module. These wires control brake, steering, and throttle. With a pinout check from my own meter, it looks like they're all working. So I'll plug these back into the control modules and we'll be good to go. We've also started our work on a sensor project designed to alert the driver on proximity to objects, like curbs, for example. Similar to a Geiger counter, the faster the chirp, the closer the object. While it's a useful feature, I'm not sure whether we'll include it in our final build. One major problem we've been dealing with is that our module software can't handle multitasking. Currently, if I try to write alternate functions like steering and LED, for example, the system must wait for the first function to complete before moving on to the next task. I spent the next week trying to rewrite the steering control, not to mention the weeks we already spent trying to find the solution to this problem. Oftentimes, the products we're using don't include the best documentation, so finding the root cause for the issues can be a bit tricky. In this case, I found our solution on an online forum that told me to set target to speed and position instead of only position. Did I mention I wasted a lot of time coding? Let's go play a game while we're waiting. What do you want to play first? Clip. Okay, take a guess. Colonel Mustard. I was right, it was Colonel Mustard! Why don't we go check on Dad again? Ugh, let's go play another game. Okay, uh, we've been working on the steering, and the steering was super slow, and we weren't sure maybe we selected the wrong components. What we found out was that just a couple lines of code change, we had some limits, and so we found a way to remove those limits. Now, it's super responsive. I've updated the code for all the actuators, so they're working faster now. Let's take it for a spin. My question is, <laughs> when the 100 aids is done and the project is done, where do we put it? Because it's really large. Maybe we'll auction it off or something. I don't know. That's the only question you have? Well, there is the question of how much have you spent, but... Uh, Not that much. That's a little fuzzy, so... She thinks I spent twice as much as I, as I budgeted. I don't count tools in the budget, so... Uh, you know, I needed the tools to do the job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, let's see, why did I start this project? I had left Ford, I had, I think, a good career there. I left the Ford uh, for, I think, a really good opportunity to actually start up a company here in the U.S. to develop autonomous vehicles. Things were going really well. You know, we developed some uh, autonomous capability, demonstrated that on public roads, and then COVID hit due to some strategy changes and also due to some geopolitical situations between the three different countries. The parent company pulled out all their funding. So, you know, I had to figure out, you know, what am I going to do now? You know, a lot of decisions we make together, we talk about what we want to do because, you know, we're trying to grow our family. And initially it was just an, an, a thought. Well, he was pretty excited and he needed to complete something that he had started. And the 100 days was basically a period of time that he needed to fill before he could take the next step in employment. And Shane has to stay busy, so he found the most difficult way possible. <laughs> he stayed very busy. <laughs> Actually, a lot of second guessing, like, I think maybe I shouldn't do this. I know uh, several times throughout this, she's been like, no, you can do this, keep going. Often <laughs> she would say, you know, Shane, you could have picked an easier project. <laughs> I told them that most people, when they have spare time, they go clean out a closet or their sock drawer, not create an autonomous vehicle 
in their garage with their kids. I also told them, you've started it, you can't stop. You have to finish it now. And Even if it takes like 200 days? <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> we have a lot of work left to do still. And We're all looking forward to finishing this. <laughs> it's day 23 and our new gear ratio box has finally arrived after weeks of waiting. This will improve the steering even further. It's very responsive now, almost as fast as I can turn it. The steering is a lot quicker now, so it's much more responsive. It's exactly what we needed. We made a couple little minor improvements. Uh, for instance, on the accelerator here, uh, we added a wheel because actually what was happening was we were getting stuck right in these little grooves here. With that fixed, we now enter another long week of coding. I wrote the initial LED code just to make sure I could control all the lights. Even though I've already installed multiple modules, I still can't control both the motors and LED lights at the same time because of a software issue. So I'm writing the code so that it distributes inputs coming from the PC into my module network so that multiple nodes can read from the PC. I had to figure out how I was going to pass all this information through in order to make everything work properly. G3. Miss. A1. Hit and sunk. This one more game you might have a chance at. Okay. Good game. Let's go check on Dad again. Oh, there it is. With all the network communication issues we've run into, we need to know that the shuttle will stop if we send a command from a sensor. We won't end up using this particular range sensor in the end, but this is a quick way to make sure we won't get stuck down the road. We wrote our own algorithm to process the data, which produces a unique signal that's clean and representative of what's in the environment, enabling us to control the brakes. It's a weakness. It stopped. It won't let me go. After another long week of coding and rewiring, we finally resolved our communication issues so that our motors and LEDs are able to fully function at the same time. When we steer, we have turn signals, we got side markers, we got a running light. These automatically turn on when we're driving. We don't have to turn the turn signals on. We press the brakes, we got brakes. So just some basic functions uh, that we would want in, in the exterior of the vehicle. And this is here so I don't cut my head. I've cut it like several times already. <laughs> Day 32, and my brother Jason is here for a test drive. All right, this is a no steering wheel test with uh, Evil Knievel driving here. This is where touchiness is a little, you just gotta go light on the steering, dude. Just, hey, <laughs> go, go light, go light. All right. It's pretty cool. It's actually pretty responsive. I mean, the brakes and the pedal work pretty well, but it's kind of kind of freaky driving with no steering wheel, especially when a car's coming your way. That's, that's the hardest part. <laughs> especially when this center. It's probably harder for Shane to sit next to me because, you know, you kind of go in this way a little bit. It's actually pretty good. It's pretty fun. Yeah. I can't wait. Stay tuned because next our golf cart is going to take on a huge transformation you won't want to miss. Thanks for watching and subscribing.